Okay, hello everyone. This is Christina from Speak English with Christina, and I am very excited to have you here for this live event. Uh, uh, this is a monthly live event every third Thursday of the month, uh, so you can always come back, come here, and um, and just hang out with me, in fact. Uh, uh, so, hello Akram, hello Nassim, how are you? Uh, it's really good to, to see you here, so thanks for joining. Maybe um, just to begin, can you tell me where are you from? Um, because, uh, ah, there you go, from Kiev, Ukraine. All right, great. Uh, uh, Brazil, yeah, I, there, there are people all over the world who are, um, who come and who watch Speak English with Christina. Uh, that's one of the things that I really, really, really love is that internet gives us the possibility to just erase the borders uh, um, and to, to get to know each other, to meet people from other countries and other cultures and, you know, just make the world a better place by communication. Um, so it's really great to have you here. Uh, as you know, um, this is a, ah, and you're in La Rochelle, Julie. I've been to La Rochelle. It's a lovely city uh, with the little fortress on the port. It's nice. Uh, um, so, so we're here every third Thursday of the month. Uh, just in case, if you're not subscribed, um, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel simply because that's the way that you get notifications when we go live. So you can be sure to, to join us, to ask your questions, to improve the way that you learn English. I, come, I missed you. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, thank you. Um, but we're back now. So, so here we are. Um, and today we're going to, I'm just going to open the floor. So that's sort of um, a typical English expression, open the floor. Uh, hello, Madi. Um, open the floor. It means to, to let other people um, speak, e even though you're, you're going to speak through the chat. But I want to open the floor to questions because I'm basically, I'm here to answer your questions about learning English. Maybe you have questions about a grammar point, a vocabulary point, a question about pronunciation, about small talk, about phrasal verbs, whatever it is. Um, I want you to type your question in the chat uh, and we'll see um, how many questions we can, we can get to today. Hello, Ahmed from Lurdistan. Wow. Um, so it's good to have you all here. So go ahead and think of what is your biggest question about learning English? And we'll see what questions we get in the chat uh, um, so that I can answer your questions. Yes. Uh, all right. Oh, hello, Nevin. Nevin, nice to see you. Uh, I, was, I had Nevin on a live session earlier this week, so it's really good to see you back. Nevin, you're really motivated um, to, learn, to learn English. That's really great. Uh, all right, so let's see, what questions do we have for today? I don't see any questions yet, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm sure that there will be a few in, uh, in a moment. Um, just while you, while you are thinking of some questions, oh, you're from Egypt, wow, I would love to visit Egypt one day. That, that's one of my countries that I really want to visit because I've always loved, um, you know, ancient Egypt and, and just it's been a fascinating culture. Um, so one of the questions that I actually did receive earlier this week um, is how to, how to improve your English. And I promise you, you want to improve your vocabulary. So we'll start with how can you improve your vocabulary? Um, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give to improve your vocabulary is to, um, to identify a situation. For example, you want to go to a restaurant or you want to talk about um, where you're from, or you want to 
uh, be able to check into a hotel when you're traveling, things like this. Yes, okay, good. Um, what you can do is you can create uh, vocabulary sheets uh, that help you to put all of the vocabulary for a specific context into one place. And I actually made a video on this uh, where I talk about a thing that's called the Vocabulary Booster Binder. I'm going to put this in the chat so you can see it. Vocabulary Booster Binder. Um, and you'll see that there, there is a video if you go on to my YouTube channel um, and you look for a video, it's called something like how to learn more vocabulary quicker. Um, and it explains that what you can do is to create uh, a folder, a binder, with uh, different sheets for different situations. So you collect vocabulary that is connected to a specific context and you use that to help you practice and learn the vocabulary that is in a context. Don't learn just lists of random vocabulary. That, that's not, that makes it difficult, actually. Um, but you want to learn expressions, vocabulary in context. Uh, but let's see, Louise, would you mind telling us the differences between go to church and go to the church and other similar phrases? Sure. Um, so basically, when you say go to church, this is um, an activity. It's, you know, people who are Christian on Sunday morning, they go to church. So it's, it's a fixed activity. Um, whereas go to the church, it's not a fixed activity, like a, a fixed Sunday morning ritual. When you go to the church, um, it's, it's in a more generic sense. For example, I could say, um, this weekend I was in Paris and I went to the church, the, the Notre Dame church, to visit um, because I wanted to see what it looked like. And so when you go to church, it's talking about that specific Sunday morning um, activity that Christians do every Sunday morning. And if you go to the church, you're just going to, you're physically going to a place that is a church uh, but it could be for tourism, it could be uh, because you have a wedding to go to, it could be because you have a, a baptism or an appointment with someone at the church. Uh, right, so that's the difference between those. Um, Watson, you had the question, how to pass the fear of starting a conversation in English? Uh, that's a very good question because a lot of people have this fear of starting a conversation. And I would suggest um, that you find a conversation partner. Um, you're welcome, Louise, you're welcome. Um, find a conversation partner, someone that you feel comfortable with, someone that you feel confident with, uh, um, someone who makes you feel like you're not afraid to make mistakes and you're not afraid to feel a little silly uh, a little stupid because you make mistakes. Uh, and I'll give you a website to find a conversation partner. It's italki. Um, it's a fantastic website to find a conversation partner and start slowly. Start with a very small objective. Um, for example, maybe you can learn your vocabulary if with your vocabulary booster binder for a specific situation. And then with your conversation partner, you can practice making a conversation for this specific situation. You'll feel confident and comfortable because you already have the vocabulary. Um, you don't have to look for ideas of um, a topic of conversation because you, you know the context that you're going to do. And you're there with a person who understands that you're there to practice English and that it's normal to make mistakes. So, so if you do this regularly, then you, little by little, you're going to become more comfortable and you're going to have less fear of starting a conversation, let's say, in the real world with a real person and not 
in a language exchange. So I hope that helps you, Watson, um, to get over your fear. Um, get over your fear of starting a conversation. Jonathan, you ask a question. Um, do I give individual courses over Skype? Um, yes, I do, Jonathan. Actually, I do. Uh, and you can go to ChristinaRubafate.com um, and just click on Speaking English and you'll see a list of the different programs that I offer uh, for individual training. Uh, Joseph, oh, thank you, thank you, Joseph. Yeah, I don't have my glasses today, um, so it's a little different, uh, but thank you for that compliment. Uh, um, let's see, Nassim, you have pronunciation problems. Okay, um, for pronunciation problems, uh, I have a couple of good videos that are all about pronunciation. That's a good place to start. Uh, I can also recommend um, Rachel's English, uh, uh, which is a very good channel that is all about American pronunciation. I'll put that in the chat. Uh, she does excellent videos, um, and she really takes different aspects of pronunciation, and she focuses on one specific aspect in each video, and so it's very good for step-by-step um, -step improvement of pronunciation, and step-by-step -step is definitely the way to go to improve, um, for example, pronunciation. This way you know where to start, it's manageable, you can do it, you can get a small victory, and then you stay motivated um, to continue, and that's, that's very important. To, Right, and then we'll do one more question. Julie, uh, you said it's hard to use the right time. I think you mean the right tense, like the past, the present, and the future. Um, for, to, for the tenses, uh, one video I can recommend is the video that I published Tuesday, which is about the past tenses. And again, something that can help you um, to get used to the different tenses. Uh, again, is to go step by step. Uh, there are a lot of tenses in English. So if you say, I want to learn all the tenses, that's a lot, it's a lot of work to do. Uh, and it's better to start by focusing maybe on one thing and then focus on a different tense uh, and then focus on another one. Eventually, you'll need to mix them because when, when we speak, we mix all of the tenses, um, but it can help you to focus on one, do some examples, feel comfortable with it, and then perhaps look at a different one. Another thing that helps also is looking at um, comparing the English tenses to the tenses in your native language and seeing how they're similar but also seeing how they're different. Um, just for example, in French, because I also speak French, uh, um, the past simple in English and the present perfect simple are not exactly the same thing as the passé composé in English, uh, in French, sorry, even though they look similar in structure. So you can see that when you use um, the passé composé in French, so things like uh, yesterday I read a book, um, last week I visited some friends uh, um, in French, that becomes not the present perfect simple, which would be I have read or I have visited, but it becomes the past simple. And so you can see that there's a difference between the native language of French, in this case, uh, um, and English, and that can help you to avoid confusing the two. Um, so look for differences and similarities also when you are studying English because it can help you um, to make that a little clearer. All right, you guys, um, I'm not gonna keep you for too long this evening. These are short uh, videos where you can come and you can ask questions. If I didn't get to your question, um, Come back and join us next week. The, these are always on the third Thursday of the month uh, um, at the same time. It's 6.30 p.m. France time. 
um, and different times in different parts of the world. Um, so do come back next time with your questions. I will be more than happy to, uh, to answer your questions. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and please, this is the best thing that you can do for me is to share my videos with your friends so that I can help even more people to learn English. Because I know when I learned a foreign language, when I learned French, it opened so many doors. It opened so many opportunities. And English is also a way uh, to have more opportunities to enjoy travels uh, in a better way, to make friends from different cultures, and to just enjoy a richer life thanks to uh, English and different languages. All right, you guys, I just want to say thank you for coming. It's an absolute pleasure, and I will see you next time um, on the Speak English with Christina live Q&A. All right, you guys, have a good evening or afternoon, wherever you are. See ya.